And good morning again. <laughs> you know, uh, you can have a really fine machine like this Monarch 10 E lathe here, but uh, it's not going to do everything by itself. You've got to make things happen. And there's also preparing the machine. I was uh, thinking about this last night, and uh, I counted back. When was the first time I run one of these machines? I was allowed to, as a young person, to run the beater, most beat up one of three, in a shop 45 years ago. And I just loved the machine then, and I never thought I would own one. But I got two of them. Okay. Now, <laughs> that was then and this is now. So I'm going to talk a little bit about preparing the machine. I have, I have a little bit in the past. Now, to get the most accuracy over the years, and I've talked to a lot of people, and I own, uh, I have my second one here. It's uh, kind of a junker, uh, hard inch HC chalker. Now, I found those uh, really handy when I was doing motorcycle cylinder head work for the small parts, including uh, cutting valve seats. Might get into that when I get this thing, uh, this uh, chucker going. But I'm going to talk about, I'm going to show you something um, on this machine and get back to the hard inch and the Monarch thing. The most accurate um, chuck that you can use on either a hard inch or a, the Monarch 10 E is a small four jaw, small as possible four jaw. Now the 5C collet, I'm going to talk about that, I think that's pretty cool too, is uh, the hard inch just spanks uh, Monarch on uh, 5C collets. Well, you know, hard inch in, invented them. Uh, the reason is because that collet on the hard inch is sitting right in the barn. I think the barn's still in here. Well, it's over here. Hey, we'll go over here and get the barn. You see? Now the hard inch, um, right in the spindle nose, okay? The Monarch, now this is a custom chuck, another preparation that I built on this machine. Oh, I think I made actually made this chuck on the old uh, machine here. This is a fully adjustable collet nose, like a uh, um, buck adjust true chuck. It's got adjusting screws. 5C collet. This is a hardened uh, insert called a CNC collet holder. And I ground it to fit into this pre-hard 4140 body that I that I machined. Okay, so this is fully adjustable. This is just one machine preparation. And this was a quite an improvement over the factory solid collet nose for me. I don't know about you, but it was for me. But there's a disadvantage. You can see how far the actual collet is from the spindle bearing on, on this. But, but this does a pretty good job. But to get the closest tolerance, and I, I've heard it. I, I haven't chased stuff on a, a HLBH, but I, I was getting real great tolerances on the HC chucker, which is a little turret lathe. The most accurate chuck i found, and other people have too, is the smallest possible four-jaw chuck. Now, I'm going to show you the four-jaw chuck. <laughs> this is pretty funny. And let's see what you think of this. Okay, now I got a uh, damaged 8-inch Monarch, and I believe they're made by Cushman, standard chuck, 8-inch. And it got here it is. And here's the slots here. It's now a five and three eighths inch. And what happened is somebody removed the jaws and the screws, but they put them in a box and they used the thing as a faceplate and damaged the slots out here. Okay. 
And then they threw it in the scrap pile along with the box of the parts. And I go, hey, can I have that thing? Oh, yeah, I love you. That got all screwed up. It buzz messed it up. So I got this for free. And so what I did is I cut down the body and I actually shortened the jaws, ground them on a surface grinder. See that? This was an 8 inch chuck. Now it's a 5 and 3 eighths inch chuck. And to do that, let's turn that around. These are the retaining <clears throat> pins for the, uh, for the screws. They were out here. I relocated them. Look, they just kind of crowded into the actual uh, um, D flat, the D1 flat surface there, but it, it caused no damage. I really couldn't go any further. So, and then here, I took and uh, mounted this on precision ground uh, rod. Is actually a, a counter shaft out of an industrial transmission. It's just uh, perfectly true. And I took it to a company that had a balancing machine and had this dynamically balanced. You can see the balance holes here. I think the machine is called a shank. So this is a custom chuck, dynamically balanced. Okay, that's a preparation. All right. <laughs> you know, I tell you what, you can buy the machine, but there's just a whole bunch of little things you got to do. Okay, and I can show you those little things as I go, but there's another aspect of what I what I'm doing is uh, I got to get things done for myself and uh, what I show is stuff I'm doing for myself, but you know something that's how I learned is following an old guy around in a shop doing things, you know, and it didn't happen overnight. And it's not a classroom situation at the top level. So if you want to get to the top level and build precision spindles and things like that, there's a lot of preparation for that. And that's preparing the machine, like I showed you. That's uh, working the machine. You have to do that. You've got to put the time in, you know. You really do. You got to put time in, put a piece of steel in the lathe, and cut, cut and cut and cut, measure and measure and measure until you get the taper out of it and make <laughs> make a make a bearing seat. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Now I'm going to tell you another. I'm going to show you another thing. You think you're going to buy uh, this stuff and do what I do? You're not. You're going to take. Uh, I do. You can buy super expensive inserts, but I take and regrind these, and I think it's better. And I'm going to show you some tricks on that if you hang around or if I hang around. Now, the internal bores for like a precision bearing housing, uh, that's a tool I created for it right there. You're not going to get good results with the uh, that, that's not going to do it, not going to work at all. Okay, how do you get that? Over here, with this. This is the key. You want to do what I do, you master this machine. Isn't that sweet? Hey, come on, let's go outside for a minute. I'll show you. There we go. Look at this mess here. I got this old Johnson I'm going to restore. This, uh, is doing pretty doggone good. Got a couple little spots of rust on there where I forgot to put some, uh, um, oil. But it's looking good. This thing here is going to be a lot of fun. Now, this, this machine is a basic machine. And uh, before 
you operate uh, something like the Monarch 10 EE or the Jig Bore and stuff like that, you really need to operate regular machines and uh, learn everything you can in a classroom situation and then work your way up and start figuring out uh, how to make things work. So, okay, I'm just going to give you a little pep talk there. I'm real happy with uh, not too much rust on that old uh, drill press. I'm going to pack it up real good. And uh, wherever there's rust, I'm going to use Ed's hoppies. Okay, have a good one.